Hello and welcome to worship at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us on this first Sunday after Pentecost as we celebrate the various expressions of the Holy Spirit. As we begin our service, please join me in the responsive call to worship. In one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, old and young, gay and straight. The body does not consist of one member, but of many. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. We are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Baptized by the Spirit, we claim our membership in the body of Christ. Let us pray together. God of all good gifts, we thank you and praise you. Your spirit has touched our lives, bringing wisdom, ability, strength, courage, and passion. Enable us to use our gifts and appreciate the gifts of others in service to you and the world. In all that we do, and in all that we are, may your name be glorified and your reign fulfilled on this earth. Amen. Hello, and welcome to all the children who are joining us for worship today. Today, as you can see, I brought some flowers to worship. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's so many different types of flowers. Even Dylan picked some flowers to share, too. What do you have there, Dylan? Uh, okay, and I see hey, there's a, a tiny dandelion, but I got it. That's up there's a morning glory, and I'm not exactly sure. I think this is a rose, and then I'm not sure what the other two are. Okay. So um, Dylan found some flowers that he came to share. Mm -hmm. Can you hold this? And um, I have a sunflower here. And I have a rose here, two roses. Oh. And we also have some other beautiful flowers that I don't know the names of. And Hazel. Didn't you bring something to share? Hazel drew some different types of flowers to share. Um, so these are some flowers. So these are some flowers that I drew. Um, 
This one is an Easter lily. This one is a cherry blossom. And um, this one is a morning glory. And this one is a sunflower. And thi this one and this one, I don't know the names of those two. And this one's a rose. This one's a dandelion. And this one's a flower bud. And this one's a tulip. Wow, there are so many different types of flowers, right? Uh, what do you guys think? Which one do you think is the best flower? Uh, morning glories? Um, I don't think any flower is the best. All of them are really beautiful in wow. all the ways. That's true, right? Which one do you think is better? Like someone might think this dandelion some people think it's the worst when these grow on your yard. Whereas somebody else might see a field of yellow bright dandelions and thinks that it looks so beautiful. And, you know, look at this rose. Some people think the rose is so fancy and smells so nice. Does that mean the rose is the best? Flower? No. Yes, Hazel. Um. So some people might think um, roses like are sort of like a legend thingy, um, cause like they have the thorns, like and Sleeping Beauty sort of like I don't know why that. So do you think roses are the best or better than dandelions? No, I don't think that roses are the best though. So. I mean, some of these are similar and some are different, but none of them are better than others. Uh-huh. Well, it's the same with people. We were all created in God's image, even though we have differences. So we are all different, just like these flowers are mm -hmm. all different. And even though we're different, we're all one in Christ Jesus. So, I mean, look, so what are some differences that you see? Um, that this one, the sunflower, um, is the biggest one among them. Okay, the sunflower is really big. Uh-huh, and like the stem's like thick. That's thick stem. Uh-huh, and the roses, um, like they, um are really red and like really sort of like fancy. So when we say we're all, uh, okay, go ahead. Um, some smell, uh, they, they all smell different. Yeah, they all smell different like too. In, different people might like, have different opinions how they smell uh, like Mom and Hazel thought they smelled good, but I thought they stunk. Okay, so even though we're all created in the same image and we're all one in Christ Jesus, because look, they're all flowers, right? Mm -hmm. So should, do we ignore these differences? Are all the flowers the same? No. We already know that some flowers come in different mm -hmm. shapes and sizes. And Hazel told us some differences and there's some similarities. Mm -hmm. We don't. I know some similarities. Yeah, Hazel told us some similarities. We don't just say, look, we don't say, I don't see color, right? You see. When you see the dandelion, you see that it's yellow. You don't say, I don't see color. And what else? Um, and some dandelions like have like those furry things that you like can blow off. Yeah, very good. So some flowers might grow in gardens. Some grow on a vine. And some grow in the wild. And some grow in the wild. Yeah. And some grow on trees. Some grow at night and not at day. Some um some flowers grow their own seeds like sunflowers. They grow the seeds. They grow the seeds 
from them. Like they're in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some might need more water or sunlight. They're all different. Mm. And if we ignore those differences, then we're not really appreciating the differences. So it's the same for people. When we say, I don't see your color, then you're ignoring who they really are. Or you just see in black and white. Or you just see in black and white. Yeah, and see all these beautiful, colorful flowers. Are they just black and white? No. No! And so we want to be able to appreciate different families. Some people have different types of families. Some people live in different types of homes. And people have different capabilities, too. When we celebrate each other's differences, we care about each other and communicate with each other. OK? When we communicate, we have conversations. Um, and flowers have homes, too. Like, they can grow in only certain places. Right. So or they have certain times. Or certain times. Mm hmm OK. So we want to celebrate all these differences, all these different colors, different places where they grow. And when we communicate, we have conversations. So when you have a conversation, what do you do? Uh, you chat with the other person. Chat with other people and talk. Okay, and so, have a conversation. And learn more about them. So see this dandelion? She might ask the rose and say, Rose, do your thorns ever poke you? Because the dandelion doesn't have thorns. And the rose might say back to the dandelion, no. oh, sweet little dandelion, how do you turn yourself into a white ball of fluff? OK, so they're having conversations and learning more about each other. Answering each other's questions. Say that again. Other's questions. They don't answer each other's questions, and they don't think they already know each other. Um, like the rose might say to the sunflower, how do you grow all those seeds? Yes. Um, and the rose would might reply, in, right here in my core. Great. I like how you're thinking about these conversations. Well, Jesus, in our Bibles, told us to love one another. In John 12, 34, it says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Mm -hmm. So when we show love to others, we want to show love to everyone, not just people who look like us or look like our family or came from our same type of house. We want to show love to everyone, even people who are different. Yes. Um, I share love with my friends, even like I have friends, and they totally do not look like me. That's right. That's so wonderful, because sometimes we have a hard time appreciating those differences. Sometimes we see something different, we might not feel comfortable. But it's okay to make mistakes. We don't want to pretend that, we, that there was no difference. That's ignoring something that's very important about that person. So we want to have love in our hearts and start having communication and talking, just like chatting with your friends and chatting like these flowers did and having conversations. Yeah. Then you can understand and mm -hmm. celebrate those differences. Yeah. And when you put them all together, it's a beautiful bouquet. A flower. So, should we pray together? Yes. Do you want to? Okay, let's put our hands together. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for all of us who were born. And thank you, Lord, for all of our uniqueness that makes us unique. <laughs> Lord, help us to love one another and show love by by loving one another and having conversations mm -hmm. and 
being open to everyone who might be different for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Bye. Hear this reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning with the fourth verse. Listen for the word of God as Paul discusses the gifts that are bestowed by God's grace. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful, wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one 
by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells. But no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is now a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we will all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body. Would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, transparent and expressive. I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts each its proper size in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine I telling hand, get lost, I don't need you, or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part, the parts we mention and the parts we don't the parts we see, and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body 
does your part mean anything? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, beloved community at West LA United Methodist Church. It's always an honor and pleasure to be in worship with you, whether it's in person or online, because the very real presence of God's spirit moves in mysterious and wondrous ways, connecting us together in the intimate bond of shared fellowship as we journey together in faith, hope, and love. May this time of worship and reflection be an offering of our best selves to listen, hear, and respond to God's call to grow more Christ-like together. We gather today in this special season of celebrations where we are celebrating graduation at UCLA and many other schools across the area. The transitions of retirement of our beloved Reverend Gary and Reverend Janet and the acknowledgement of future plans for many along with celebrating the diversity and joy of Pride Month and the hope of full inclusion for all God's children. These are truly festive and bittersweet times to be sure. Anticipation of what is next can make us anxious, but also expectant, nervous yet joyful, tired but exhilarated by the possibilities. It's these very times when things are moving so fast and quickly that we wonder how we will get things done and if we will ever have a moment of peace. That's what we need to do in those times is to take a deep breath in. Please do that with me now. Take a deep, slow breath in. and let it out slowly as you feel the movement of air and God in your body. Take another deep breath with me, feeling God's presence within. And now I invite you to look around and see who is next to you, in front of you, behind you. And if you're watching online, Look around and see the images of God, either in front of you or in your mind's eye, of where you would be sitting in church if you were here today, the faces and names of those you share the pew with. Look for the glimmer in the eyes of those in our midst or in your mind. And I know it's hard to see a smile with a mask. Recognize the shared delight in making eye contact with each other or hearing the sound of breathing or the rustling of papers or the movement of children. These are the sights and sounds of the body of Christ all around us. The reminder of our shared connection as followers of Jesus. None of us looks quite the same and many of us have different roles and responsibilities here. And yet, together we make up this wonderful mosaic that is West LA United Methodist Church. If you look around, you can see with me teachers, musicians, altar guild workers, ushers, worship technicians, parking lot attendants, students, kitchen helpers, my personal favorite, coffee makers, and lifelong members, and first-time visitors. You'll also see, but not so obviously, committee members, elders and infants, each bringing their unique light and presence to this holy place. All sorts and styles of people with many different and shared talents, capacities, interests, and ways of being Christ's living and loving presence in our world. Our scripture today very comprehensively tells us what it looks like to be the body of Christ, and it reminds us of how we are intimately connected one to another, to our common hum humanity and blessing in Christ. The scripture says, 
Each of us is now part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, the Spirit. The way God designed our bodies is a model for the understanding of our lives together in the church. Every part dependent on every other part, the parts we mention and the parts we don't, the parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. This is a very familiar text for many of us, but this version from the message gives us pause to think about these familiar words with a different ear. What does it mean for us to model our lives together, dependent on one another? Those we know and those we don't. Those we see and those we don't. Those we agree with and those we don't understand. What does it look like to model our common life together to weave these different parts, these stories and dreams and abilities to embrace the intricacy and complexity of our individual identities into a healthy and integrated whole. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. We must never forget this. Only as we each accept our part of that body does our part mean anything. So if we truly embrace this text that shows us how to be God's living and loving presence, embodying God's love and justice together, what do we do with those who wish to exclude or deny the sacred worth, ability, and image of God in others? And you all know that according to our UMC discipline, that book of rules and order that we are to abide by, our LGBTQIA siblings are seen and stated as incompatible with Christian teaching. What does this do to the body of Christ? How do we justify the exclusion of any child born and blessed with our baptismal vows committed to Christ and to raising them as Christians in this church because of who they are, how they love, from any activity and sharing God's life, giving love with the world. How do we deny their sacred worth? Listen to this verse again. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt. Each of us is part of the harm imposed on our LGBTQIA family when we deny them full access to God. The toll of exclusion on the sacred worth and identity of a person, especially by the church itself, is incompatible with Christian teaching, with the way of Jesus. The harm that society, culture, and church has done to our LGBTQ family is both personal and corporate. You know, we have a strong and vital children's ministry here. Children are taught that God loves them, that we love them. We teach them to sing, Jesus loves the little children, all the little children, until and unless those little children discover that their orientation or gender identity or gender expression are not acceptable in polite society or in our denomination. That they are wrong, possessed, going through a phase, abominations. So I guess that means Jesus doesn't love them now? Imagine the hurt, confusion, and anger that this false assumption has on the image of self of God's image on the child and the adult that has been led to believe that they are not loved, 
not worthy, not created in the image of God. When we question the validity of church doctrines that exclude and punish difference, we get a glimpse of what our work to grow more Christ-like together must be. When one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. Healing comes when we acknowledge the pain and harm being done in the name of Christ by our institutions, our churches, schools, government. Healing comes when we take action to offer compassion and affirmation to cleanse wounds and weary spirits and embrace the beautiful intricacy of our human connection to the holy and divine. Healing comes when we can see the image of God in those we do not understand or mention or want to talk about. Healing comes when we offer compassion and care to the wounds of those discarded and cast out. Healing comes when we acknowledge our own complicity in maintaining rules over relationships. Healing comes as we grow more Christ-like together. Healing comes when we choose embrace over exclusion. Choosing to heal can be risky and dangerous. It requires us to step out of our comfort zones, our familiar surroundings, our normal behaviors. To declare that we will no longer participate in the harm and injury caused to parts of our holy body that God alone has created. To stand with these members of our sacred body who have been kept from full participation and connection with God's beloved community. We act in faith, love, and confidence in restoring God's faithful, holy body into one beautiful, blessed whole. The courage and faithfulness of the body of Christ is witnessed at the Wesley Foundation serving UCLA where in 1992, the board took a bold step in repairing our relationship with our LGBTQI siblings to become the first reconciling campus ministry in the country, thereby setting a course for our current ministry at 580 Cafe to truly embrace the diversity, complexity, and brilliance of our vibrant students where myself and so many others have been able to share and witness to God's embrace with those who have been cast out, pushed away, and renounced by family, church, and society. Choosing to heal can be risky and dangerous when we choose to embrace and not exclude, when we act as the body of Christ to claim all people are created in God's image capable of sharing God's gifts and encouraged to share these in our witness and work to establish God's beloved community here and now. In 2017, you at West LA United Methodist decided to embrace this bold model of being church together and become a reconciling congregation. Opening the already gracious doors of this sanctuary to truly and authentically embrace all of God's people and encourage and engage each in being and bringing their own true authentic self, God's self, before us. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. Only as you accept your part of the body does your part mean anything. Thank you, beloved West LA friends and family, for accepting your role, your part in bringing Christ's body alive in our community, offering God's healing presence to our LGBTQI family, to our immigrant families, to our not here yet families. Each of us now must look into our own body, our own part in this body of Christ and seek to embrace those whom we meet here 
in our homes, in our schools, and our neighborhoods, and yes, even in our greater United Methodist Church with the healing embrace of a just, glorious, and gracious God. We are Christ's body, growing more Christ-like together. May it be so. Please join me in prayer. In the midst of all that keeps our spirits frantic, overwhelmed, and troubled, we pause. We pause to remember each other as those whose precious and precarious lives are inherently bound together. We pause to remember the basic gifts of water, of trees, of beauty, of the land we gather upon. We pause to remember our neighbors, distant and near. And to the one who is love, we bring these prayers of our communities to share, to lift, and to hope. We pray for all LGBTQI children and youth across the globe, for the ones who are struggling with feelings of isolation and shame, for those who have no safe place or people to retreat to, for those who must be teachers to the adults in their lives, for those who are unsafe in their homes and communities. We pray for our elders whose labor we are indebted to, for the ones who never tasted the freedom they fought for, for the ones who were forced to the fringe of their own movements, for the allies who suffered beside us, casting their hopes with us in true solidarity, for the ones forgotten and betrayed. We pray for all those who hunger for justice and liberation today, for the ones who lay down their lives for their friends, for the ones who tell the truth, for the ones who take risks, who dream, who feed and pray, who fight for bread and roses, for the ones who are eager to learn and grow and offer their gifts to the work of embodying your promises. We pray for all who are suffering in the church and in the world at the hands of white supremacy, for those imprisoned by the state, for those whose land has been taken, for the earth that groans beneath us, for those without food or housing, for those fighting to recover from illness, coronavirus, and other diseases, for those experience economic hardship for those who have yet to repent. We pray in gratitude for all that nourishes and sustains us, for the gifts of beauty and friendship, shared meals and art and love, for laughter, for pleasure, 
for friends, families, and comrades who lift our spirits always by our side when the days are heavy, for the freedom we have in Christ, for your presence within and around us in our highs and lows, our hopes and our despair. God, we give you thanks. Hear our prayers and deepen our willingness to show up with and for one another, sharing in each other's burdens and working to protect and care for one another, for building and being your gracious body in the world. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Creator, and in the spirit of love. Amen. Let us continue in prayer as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, receive this blessing as we go forward into this beautiful day. Continue to serve with faith and love. Depart from our time today committed to sharing the best of yourself through generosity of time and resources, meeting the needs of others, both spoken and unspoken, seen and unseen, heard and unheard. As the God of healing has healed us, let us go now and share that compassion with the world. Let us go and greet our beloved transgender, bisexual, lesbian, gay, intersexed siblings, our black, Latinx, indigenous siblings, sharing the good news that they are seen, that they are heard, that they too are beloved. Go now in hope, go in peace, go with God's grace. Amen.